I believe there's a hero in all of us. You have great powers, only some of which you have as yet discovered. I'm a superhero, I'm a real life superhero. The world needs extraordinary. We will make you a superhero. Are you ready to become the hero? Initiating surprise in three. This two is one. The Real Brian Show. Yes, it's Friday. No agenda, no format. Time to grab your favorite drink. Grabe it. Don't just grab it. If you're from, uh, you know, some other country, you're going to grab it. Grabe your favorite drink, okay? Time to end the week, right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. We've got some new stuff coming out this next week. I can't wait to share it with you. Uh, now, Captain, I understand now, not only has massive abs, but he also has massive glutes and triceps and calves and... Well, I'll let you, you know, I'll let him talk about it and tell you all the rest. It's going to be awesome. And guess what we've been watching this week? <gasps> Let's hit record and see what happens. I take pleasure in gutting you, boy. I'll take pleasure in gutting you, boy. What's wrong with these people, huh? Let's rock it. I often wonder what is wrong with us people as well, because I take pleasure in gutting you, boy, Captain. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm flattered that you take pleasure in gutting uh, me. Yeah. Wait, what? What? Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Something's wrong. No. No, nothing's wrong. Did you grab your favorite drink and, uh, yeah, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Ready? 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 Yeah. yeah. Water! Water! Hey, since I've been, since I count hydrating. my calories, yeah, since I count my calories, I, I never, I don't want to budget for like juice mm. or uh, soda anymore. I want to, yeah. I want to save my calorie budget for other stuff. So I hear you. I've been drinking a lot more water, which is great. So. That's good, man. That's good. Yeah. Well, uh, to gutting people. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Mmm. Well, welcome to the Real Brian Show. Thanks for joining us. It is a pleasure having you. And I really appreciate you joining us and grabbing your favorite drink. I hope you, you have a favorite drink with you right now. I don't care what it is. If it's water, you know, if it's um, Klingon Rock Ticino or, or something like that. I mean, that's Rock great. Anytime. Butter beers, man. Have a good time. But we're excited to be here. We've got a lot coming, man. I got to tell you. And I'm excited. I got to share some stuff with you. But first, 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 I have to hear about your massively bulging calves triceps your glutes i mean it's like when you flex your glutes doesn't the chair like get like thrown out from you and then you kind of fall i mean doesn't that happen i don't know but every time ever since i started ever since we just started pilates last week i've been it's been a gun non-shop gun show here in des moines iowa <laughs> non-shop non guns out guns out yep. yep so good gun show all the time everywhere and dude you weren't kidding pilates is hard <laughs> <laughs> it's just, and, and that's what I was expecting. I, is, I, I, I didn't, I was not disabused when I went in. I was like, oh, this is harder than I thought it was. No, disabused. I knew it would be hard. If, if anything, it wasn't quite as hard as I thought it would be, okay. but oh, I know okay. it will get harder because we just, we've just done a couple intro courses. So, I mean, really haven't yeah. done much, um, gun show, not, uh, you know, notwithstanding. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're both enjoying it. My wife and I, and, uh, and, uh, thanks for the recommendation. Um, here to help. And I look forward, yeah, I look forward to uh, reporting back in another few weeks nice, with dude. even more good news about that. So you are correct that when you get started, you know, you don't want it to be too terribly hard quite yet because you got to get going. You got to get the muscles. Right. It, what, my, my Pilates, my original Pilates instructor, the guy that actually owns the studio always used to say, let's say hello to those muscles. And I'll be like, <laughs> okay. And he'll be like, I'm going to keep it light because, you know, we got to say hello. And so you do that. And then you're just like. Hello. And literally like the muscles are kind of like, Oh, I've Hello. never been worked before. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, so there you go. But you're right. As, as you progress, you'll be as strong as me. Uh, wait, no, actually dude, it's I my still goal. get sore. I still get sore. So yeah, you're supposed to. Cause again, just it's muscles. You don't typically, it's, it's like working all your muscles, all the tiniest muscle groups instead yeah. of your basic strength training that you do with normal weight lifting. Yeah. Dude, uh, it just works everything. So. I just did a new one today. I'm pretty excited. In fact, what you do is you're on the reformer. And so, you know, you, you've got the straps. You're facing 
Okay, so if anyone knows what a reformer is, it's it's a very long machine and all that. You lay on it, you sit on it, you can do whatever, right? It's a very versatile machine. Yeah. It is. And so typically yeah. you lay down on your back and your head is on the headrest and then your feet are on the bar and that's like the front of the thing. And then of course, so you turn around and your feet go on the headrest and then you lean back and you grab the straps and you know, you're pulling the strings and all that. And so I was doing bicep curls and stuff like that while leaning at like, I don't know that. What is that? Like a 45 degree or even further, maybe like leaning back or forward like that, Le- leaning backwards. And so you're okay. engaging your core to hold yourself right. up from going all the way down. And then you're not holding yourself and then you're doing bicep curls and other things like that. What was interesting is that the biceps got quite the workout. I was like, man, that felt good. But the core, I was yeah. like, man, it really wasn't that hard. So I'm like, okay, I guess I need a bigger challenge on the core right now, which is well, no, that just means that just means you've been, they've been, doing they've been working typical Pilates on your core for how yeah. many, however many years you've been doing it. So which, which just yeah. means you have a stronger core. Oh, uh, dude. I'm not even close to there yet. You'll uh, get there. Regardless of my abs, it's, it's as, yeah. as, as massive as my abs are, Brian, you wouldn't believe how weak my core is. It's amazing. <laughs> so well, it's cause you're back and you're, 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 you know, obliques and stuff. You got to work. To, dude, I got it. I, I graduated today to a new uh, enlightenment of Pilates. I'm going to call that Pilates oh, yeah, Nirvana. Yeah. So you know how big those springs are? Yeah. They're pretty thick, right? Yeah. I broke varying, one today. Varying resistance. You broke a broke spring. A on a string. Big, how <laughs> much, how a much spring. are they going to charge you for that? Well, no, 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 they're not. And, and, and I was like, oh, crap. So I was doing it and I was doing my little thing and all of a sudden, bam. And I was like, holy crap. Anyway. It's like a gunshot, right? Uh, yeah. And I was, it kind of scared me scary. actually. Um, that is scary. And then I was thinking like, oh, no, what did I do to the machine? I was fine. Like it didn't even hurt me or anything. But I was like, what, what did I do to the machine? And she's like, oh my gosh, it's okay. This happens. Springs wear out. This is normal. But she said, but we go through and check them pretty regularly. You know, like they do that and they go through each and every one of the coils to make sure there's no cracks or separation and all that. Apparently I'm just getting that strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, we don't, we don't like to brag here thick. on the Real Brian Show, but uh, these are massive springs, man. Well, I've broken uh, lots of piano strings over the years, grand piano strings, because of just really rocking out on the pianos. Yeah, yeah. yeah and apparently that's not as normal, but breaking a Pilates string, st- I keep saying string, spring, yeah. it's not abnormal. They have ex- extra springs. This happened before. So right. I just feel like, though, that I, I don't know, I should get an award or something and hopefully not yeah. get charged for it. <laughs> I, I I broke a spring on on my Pilates reformer and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. Exactly. That's what. Yeah, that's what you need. Man, uh, I'm so, so glad you're enjoying it though. So you've gone twice yeah. now, technically, and and but yeah, it's it's going well. Yeah. And, As of the airing of this episode, I will have yeah. gone three times, and then uh, the next thing, the next step is to start our uh, our group classes. So. Good. I brought my Pilates mug here too. Ah. That they gave nice. me, so I got my name on it. You know, that was very nice. So. Yeah, yeah, so Pilates, everyone, Pilates, in case you're not sure what it is, it's not for the faint of heart. Faint of heart. Yeah. Or it's the weak. It's a, it, it, I mean, to, to people who don't really know what it is, which included me before I started, uh, it seems kind of like a, not, not whimsical, but almost kind of a fringe thing. Kind of like, um, yeah, kind of, it's, it just sounds, it doesn't sound very hard, just, you know, which is silly because there was a stigma around How do you base it. what? Yeah, there's a stigma. Mm-hmm. How do, how do you base what a word sounds like for you know? But people do that. Uh, yeah. People people do that when they don't know any better. It's let's just say it's 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 for the physically fit. Uh, it, it gets you physically fit, is yeah. what I should say. It's for the person who wants to. Yeah. yeah, and when you want to when you want to improve your core, your po- your posture, your your overall muscle strength, that's what Pilates is for. And, and I can't wait. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, I mean it's it. it's essentially resistance training, weight training with correct posture and a huge emphasis on full body strengthening and flexibility and core strength rather than just going to the gym and, you know, hitting certain weight groups and probably right. doing the posture wrong, probably injuring yourself or, you know, right. getting your biceps so big, but the rest of the body can't. And this is the other <laughs> thing. Like, it, it, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. Biceps look cool and all that, but without the full strengthening all around the biceps and all that you're actually causing potential injury because the rest of the body isn't able to keep up with it essentially. And so yeah. the whole point of this is to really get, well, it's, it's intended to get the entire body to functional strength, which yeah. functional is live happy and healthy sort of thing. Be strong. Avoid injury. Do. Yeah. And honestly, yeah. I can't tell you how many times like Pilates has literally saved my life from injuries. It's amazing. So 
It's been great. I, I believe it, especially now. I believe it. There mm. are between five and 800 individual exercises that you oh, can wow. do in Pilates. I didn't even know that. Yeah. And then you can modify I mean, that, them. That reformer is so versatile. It's, yeah. you just wouldn't believe and Just, just in the three sessions and the two sessions I've had so far, yeah. we've, we've done, I don't I, like six, seven, eight different things with the, with the reformer that we haven't, we haven't even cracked the surface. So yeah. honestly, what I'm going to get out most of it out, what I'm going to get the most out of it besides overall strength and fitness is strength, finally getting my core where it needs to be. And that, I, to, in my opinion, that's the most important. If you have to exercise one aspect of your body, your entire life, your core is probably the most important uh, because it holds your back up. It holds, I mean, it, mm-hmm. it a strong core prevents all sorts of uh, deleterious effects that aging puts on you. So, I mean, you'd be surprised. Really, I mean, it's it really, it's an anti-ager. It is, but like it with, without strong glutes, your core is so like when a lot of people have back pain, it's usually glute injury. Not always, but most of the time, because when the glute hurts, what happens is it gets inflamed and it starts to wrap around the sciatic nerve, which then shoots up into your back. And so you think like, oh, I've got back pain. It's, it's my low middle back. No, actually it's the glute and it's referring up there. So that's a very common cause of back pain. And then people get back surgeries and all they need to do is actually just work their glutes or, or, you know, first of all, heal them and then work them. So glutes are important. Hip flexors are another one that I just learned about recently. That, <laughs> I learned about those the first session. Cause <laughs> when you're, uh, when I, you're doing your yeah. core, you got hip flexors and you're like, yeah. Oh crap. If your hip flexors are weak, then so is your core. It's like, and you got to stretch oh, those hip flexors before yeah. you work out. Yeah. So, so really it's, it's amazing how complete, uh, in fact I was, yeah, I was doing so. Oh yeah. Like the other day. Um, so, but let me just explain this. I hate standing. I've always hated standing. <laughs> Uh, I, I like do that move. most of the day. Yeah. Like moving's <laughs> fine. And, and like, but standing has always been really hard on me, even since I was a kid and it's the same with my mom and everything like that. So something to do with whatever the body is, you know, but we ended up standing the other day out on the asphalt for like an hour and a half. And I was like, okay, I'm hurting. So what's hurting is my feet, my ankles, my, my back, my, my neck for some reason was hurting. And I started huh. to go like, why is all of this hurting? Well, it's because it's all connected, right? So then I go and I start working all of those things out. You know, you get the neck, right? You get, I'm just like, I'm fine now. It's amazing how connected that whole posterior, what do you call it? The chain, I guess. I don't know what it is, but it's like from like basically your, your lower head, neck, all the way down. Yeah, the base of the skull all all the way down. Yeah. Yeah, That's crazy. But but, hey, Pilates has the glutes covered too. So I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Literally everything. Literally everything. I always say, you know, so uh, the guy that owns the studio used to say uh, it was a biscuits exercise. You can get some hot biscuits. That's what he used to call them when you'd work your glutes out. I was like, yeah. hot, hot pipe hot and biscuits. biscuits, hot cross buns. Speaking my language. I got like three drinks here. I had my tea. This is some matcha that Sarah got. So I'm, I'm sharing some matcha. Matcha, matcha, matcha man. man. Oh yeah. I want to be a matcha. And you're drinking your matcha. So how's that? How is that stuff? Yeah, by the it's, way? it's great. It's uh, you would never, you barely notice that that teaspoon of matcha is in my smoothie. Uh, it turns the smoothie a little green. So if it's like a banana strawberry, it turns it kind of a brown pink. But if you don't mind the color, it tastes fantastic. So Judge I mean, me by my bar- color, you barely, do you? Mm-hmm. You, you, the, uh, you? You could barely know that it was in there. And I, and I just, it's, it's a great peace of mind knowing that this super antioxidant thing is enriching your body. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, you yeah. know what? Here's my theory. Most likely it is actually beneficial to our health to drink matcha and do things like that. That's what everyone says, but yeah. how do you, I mean, and that's, maybe we're wrong, word for it. but at least we're believing it. And so mm-hmm. it makes us happier. And, you know, even if it's just a placebo, we're still living a healthier, happier life, but I still got to believe it's working. And so I'm just going to go with that. But anyway, yeah. still doing the cold showers. Um, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm forgetting. well, and again, so I, I, I need to I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> I keep conveniently forgetting. Um, I got to tell you, man, uh, I'm not starting off with cold. I'm not like turning it cold and jumping in like that. That would no way. Right. So I'm, I'm like, I've said before, I'm starting off warm and hot and then, I'm, but I'm getting colder and colder and colder. Uh, yesterday was it? I want to say I had it so cold for a good five minutes. It was like, how cold like was almost it? Almost shivering, man. It was great. I loved it. But I got to tell you, I get out of there. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I feel so good. I it, honestly, huh. I am shocked how good I feel. They said you would. I believe it now. Hmm. I'm a believer. I got it. I got it. And then I, I saw her face. Trigger. I don't know why. And really, honestly, it's not like I'm in the shower and I'm going, 
okay, am I going to forget about the cold water thing today? No, I literally forget about it every day, but I, <laughs> but I, I really want to try it once and just see, you know, you should dude. It, it's, fun. I know, I know that, I should, hey, it, happy, what's going to hurt it. Happy birthday to Ann attack this week, by the way, it was earlier this happy week. So birthday, happy birthday. Anna yeah. At, she is what? I think 53 now is what she, Oh, probably more right? like 33. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that, I don't know. She's in that, her young thirties. I don't keep people's age and, I'm not like, I hope she didn't I, hear you say that. I know your age. <laughs> I know the I moment that, you were born. I don't know. I hope what, that man attack gave her a good birthday present. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And I'm sure he did all kinds of, you know what? The celebration of birthdays. I love it. Spend. In fact, mine's coming up next month, you know? So it's like, it's May. I love May, but you know, the whole point, I just, I love just doing events and stuff, you know, celebrating the idea behind birthday. It's less about the gifts. I mean, gifts are fun, but it's less about the right. gifts. It's more about the experiences and have a good time and all that. So anyway, there you go. Uh, are you ready for this? Are, Y'all are, ready for this? Y'all ready for this? <laughs> That's copyrighted, you know? So what? <laughs> no, the, the guy that said like, let's, let's get ready to rumble. Did you remember he was like suing people for that? Oh my gosh. Anyway, that was a long oh, time geez. ago. So let's don't go there. That's negative. I'm excited. It's true. Let's talk positive. I'm excited. Yeah. Starting next week. This has been something I've been working towards for quite some time. We did some, you know, little tests of this for a while to try to see if it would work and all that. And it's taken a long time to get to this point. Limited resources, you know, very limited resources, by the way. But here's what we're going to do. At extremely popular demand and request, we are bringing interviews back. Finally, very excited. I've had a lot of people being kind of like, dude, bring those back. I'm like, don't worry. Yep, they're coming. Including me. I know, I know. Well, I get a lot. This is this is a fun. So interviews are returning, and I'm excited about this. And starting on Monday, and by the way, interviews will be coming on Mondays. But for now, we're going to do twice a month. Okay. That is just what I have resources for. So That's good. Yeah. this is where I can say, if any of you would, well, let me let me let me rephrase this. If any of you find value with the Real Brian Show, if you get anything at all out of the show, please consider supporting somehow. You know, if you want to get on a Patreon, it's patreoncom slash Real Brian Show. It's easy to go to. The link is in the show notes. The link is in the description below on YouTube. If you want to use our Amazon link, anytime you buy anything on Amazon, that doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, that's just now granted. Or any time extra even. So yeah. yeah, And it's a small percentage. I mean, it's two to 6% and most of the time it's two (laughs) to 3%, but it all helps, right? So anytime you buy something on Amazon, please use the link. And again, that's in the description and all that. So check that out. If you are someone who's like, hey, man, I, I, I love doing graphic design and thumbnails. I'll donate my time and take care of your thumbnails. I mean, that would be amazing right now. Holy crap. That takes so much time and I hate doing it. So little things like that, anything um, that would allow me to put more time into doing interviews, <laughs> which I would love to do. I'm doing so much back end stuff that it's just limiting. I mean, I'm doing everything right now when it comes to the back end stuff. So when you're trying to, you know keep up with all of that. It takes away from being able to do more content. So I'm throwing that out right now. Any, any way that you can help would be amazing. I honestly would love to hire a VA virtual assistant for those of you who don't know what that is, who can take on that back back end stuff. I mean, who can do the, the publishing of the shows and, you know, doing the thumbnails and I would love that. And then I could just focus on creating more content, but I, I can't do that right now. So hopefully soon, but that's the goal. So I'm just throwing that one out. Please, please consider that. But anyway, interviews on Mondays. Our first one is going to be Vincent Puglisi, who I'm very excited about, by the way, he is, he's got a book coming out May 2nd. So this is going to be cool. It's going to come out right. This, this interview, it's going to release right before his book release, but also he's, he's got, oh my gosh, he's got some crazy stories. I'm like, I, I mean, I can't wait to share this with you. It was one of those interviews where I, I literally was kind of a, okay, I know what I want to talk to him about. I have some ideas, but I literally am going to hit record and see what happens. And I was shocked and I was like, that was fun. This is going to be so exciting. So that releases on Monday, twice a month for now. I'd love to get to weekly if I can. These interviews, by the way, they will be on both the audio podcast and YouTube. So if you're just an audio podcast listener, you're in luck. Don't worry. Uh, But I don't want to clutter up the feed. In fact, that's one, you know, piece of content I got back is when there's too much in your podcast feed it gets overwhelming and then people have a tendency to say, forget it. And then just, I'm done. I can't listen to this anymore. So my goal with this is it's only two extra episodes a month in addition to our Friday episodes. And that's the podcast audio feed. Now, these other things that I'm going to mention are only going to be on YouTube. And that is Tuesdays. 
we're going to bring back movie and TV show reviews, but not episode by episode. We, we tried that with Boba Fett. We've tried that with Picard. We're not doing that anymore. Um, it was yeah. fun, but it was, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to say, Hey, we really want to talk about this because we're kind of interested in this and we're going to do just a quick review. And so this upcoming Tuesday, we're going to talk about moon Knight. And even yeah. though the show has not finished it's season one, we're going to talk about what we've watched so far, which will be the first four episodes, I believe. Yeah. Like and first so, impressions. Yeah. And it's going to be more of a, Hey, we, we got to talk about this. Okay. We're going to do a quick, and by the way, quick, short review on Tuesdays. 30 minutes is going to be a long one and that's only because it warrants it. But most of the time we're going to try to keep them as close to 10 or so minutes as possible. Yeah. That's another thing too. More content, but hopefully not too much time. So that again is only going to be on the YouTube channel. So if you are not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, now's your chance. YouTube.com slash the real Brian. And again, the link is all in the show notes and everything like that. Make sure to go there, hit subscribe, and then also hit the bell, by the way. There's a little bell button. <laughs> if you look, there's the, the, <laughs> the video, bell button. and then on the bottom, there's, you know, subscribe, and then there's a little bell. Click that because it will give you notifications so that you'll know when a new video comes out. You oh, have okay. to do yep. that now. It's a new thing, but or new-ish. So make sure to subscribe, even if you're, like, preferring to listen to the show, that's fine. But if you want to catch some of these additional videos and episodes that we're going to be doing, just make sure to get on there. And then Thursday, here's another one. Captain, we've talked about stuff that we've purchased. I mean, you held up your matcha last week, stuff like that. People go and they go, I'm going to get this. This is cool. And so it's like, okay, well, on one hand, we can do that through our Amazon link, for example. But on the other hand, why not do a little more of an official review of stuff? Because, hey, we've got our opinions. Why not get on there and say, hey, here's what I thought about it. I liked it. I didn't like it. Whatever. Here you go. You know, it, it's a simplified recommendation for something that we have or that we bought. Because, hey, I think most of us buy a lot of things based on recommendations and our friends' thoughts. Because, hey, what'd you think? Would you, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to go get it then, you know? I'm not trying to sell. I'm not going to sell anything personally. Um, I just want to give you my recommendations on it, but I want it to be super simple. So I'm going to be doing that starting on Thursdays, but to kick this one off, I'm excited because, you know, May the 4th is coming up pretty soon. May the 4th be with you. Star Wars day. After years. (laughs) Yes. mm, (laughs) Captain. Yes. After years, my lightsaber arrived. I'm going to be showing it off and reviewing it on next Thursday. So, you know, just, just come see it. I mean, I, I just want to show it off like I'm, I've got the, the real Brian logo in it. You know, it's, it's like all these kind of cool things and stuff. So I'll be showing that off. I'll be showing. And again, it's very simplified, you know, stuff we need, stuff nerds need, stuff we need. We're going to have a good time. So you don't want to miss these episodes. But again, these reviews are only going to be on the YouTube channel. So make sure to, again, subscribe and, and do that. And then, of course, our Friday episodes, which is what we're doing right now. These aren't going to change. These will continue to be on the YouTube channel and the audio podcast. So you're not going to no changes for you. Right. But. No change for you. Here's what I'm thinking. I kind of want to start calling this the Friday happy hour because yeah. we got to, dif- I mean, it's still the real Brian show, but we got to differentiate some of these episodes and stuff. And I've had some people come in and say, Oh, w- what do you guys talk about? I'm like, what don't we talk about? So happy hey, stuff. It's going to be so fun. Just Friday happy hour, <laughs> grab your favorite drink, no agenda, no format. Just come hang out in the week. Right. That's it. I mean, let's just have a good time. So, that's what we're going to call it. Friday happy hour. Anything goes um, within reason. I do have some rules I wanted to to bring up and I wanted your thoughts on this, Captain. Oh, rules. Okay. I have All two right. rules. You're hitting One. me with this. I, I did not know you're going to hit me with this. So go ahead. This is my initial response. Go ahead. Okay, here we go. So there's two rules. The first rule is there's no such thing as the real Brian show. There's two rules. All right. First rule is this has to be clean. Cause we've done that. We've done this this whole time. And we do have some people who, you know, their kids are listening or their kids are in the car. So, okay. That's the first rule. Second rule, mm-hmm. anything goes with the exception of don't talk about anything, which creates a divide. So I, basically as long as our content brings done, yeah. people together and encourages us and lifts us up and that kind of thing. So I yeah. just want to keep it accessible. Yeah. No, and, and respectful I respect that. too. Yeah. That's the other thing. I like everything you have laid out. So yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and really the divide thing is it's going to be difficult because um, in fact, you know, a lot of people will say, okay, well that includes religion and politics. And it's kind of like, well, if somebody Absolutely were to. Absolutely. It recru- includes religion. Yeah, and politics. But if somebody, yes. if one of my guests were to come on and say, Hey, I'm a, I'm a Christian or I'm a, you know, a Buddhist or a Hindi or whatever. Well, they can mention what they are. Yeah. Just, I, I was going to say that. that that doesn't fall under that rule because they're right. sharing who they are. They're sharing their story. I don't care about that. Right. 
It's if somebody starts saying, okay, well, you need to do this or this is wrong or that, you know, okay, now, now we're creating, I just don't want to go there because yeah. there's so much of it out there. As we know, everybody's talking like that right now. In fact, you, you remember the mad scientist? Of course. Yeah. I mentioned yeah. him a couple of weeks ago. He came Luke? back out of, he keeps going into the speed force and then disappears <laughs> and then comes back out. And so I'm just so glad he's back. That's we were speed chatting force, man. I disappeared in there once and it's, that it, was a little you, insane. You yeah. just can't come back. Yeah. So you can, but it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he is in his, uh, what is it? Third year of residency right now. I want to say. Okay. And so, you know, he's working, he's seen some tough stuff. He shared a few things with me, you know, and you know, being in that field, especially right now is very difficult in the, in the medical field. Yeah. But he, you know, we were chatting the other night and he was just talking about how refreshing it was to be, hanging out again, but also to just to be around someone positive and yeah. having positive interaction again. And it's just a, it's a good reminder when you hear that kind of thing that I think most of us are tired of pretty much everything negative going on out there right now. The yeah, hate, I anger, mean, everything. And it's just like, we need a place to go that is going to lift us up and it's not going to create divide and it's not going to, Oh geez, those guys are going off to, you know, we just don't want to do that. Right, and, right, and I know right. we have in the past occasionally. Yes, yeah, yeah. And a little bit too. And I know like I've, I've asked people and they said, well, it's not that bad. And I'm like, well, they're either being nice or it really wasn't that bad, but still I don't even want it to be there. So yeah, we're here to, we're here to pump you up, you know, pump you, you up. up. drink some matcha, get your Pilates on. You're going to be flexing and punching people with your bicep. Oh yeah. You're going to yeah. Pilates like a girly man. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh yeah. Flex my, flex my core. My core is so weak. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was it turned around the other day? And I was like, who was that? Like turned around and like flexed and it punched somebody. That was awesome. Anyway. So I hope it's not too much content for you. I know we're looking at three days a week, regularly, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, every week for sure. Um, now I don't want to box us into that every Tuesday is going to be this and right. every Thursday, you know, we, we may not, I mean, or maybe we have two movie reviews in a week because we, <laughs> so try not to get a little, you know, if we, if don't we get too regimented, yeah, that's what I'm looking for interviews yeah. twice a month for now. And I hope we can bring more, but again, I hope it's not too much to consume. What I ask you to do is this pick and choose what you want to watch and listen to. And if you want to consume it all, by all means, please do, but don't get stressed out and overwhelmed. Just stay up keep up to date with whatever you can keep up to date with. And that's all we ask. We're just trying to provide more content for you if you want it. So there you go. Good. Yep. Dude. Hey, I think it's origin time. Is it origin time? Is it? It probably it's like, is. It's like, what does the music mean? It's like, is it yeah. origin time? Well, you know what the origin means? Uh, yeah. So actually, no, I yes, don't. You tell me. So today's origin comes from uh, Chris, uh, one of our regular listeners. Uh, yeah, Chris. You want to know <laughs> where dry humor comes from. You know, is there a wet humor? Why is it called dry humor? Uh, <laughs> good question. Uh, yeah, and I, I had no humor. idea. Either. I mean, I kind of, I kind of figured it had to do with, you know, what the word dry implies. But let's see what what I found out. So, okay. the best explanation I got was from a, a site called Camcord.com with a K. Camcord with a K. Uh, the term dry humor refers to the fact that this form of humor is presented with little to no change in expression or in a deadpan manner. The closest comparison to dry humor for mo the most people use is sarcastic humor. They're very similar. There are a few different aspects of sarcastic humor and dry humor that set the two apart. For example, plenty of people change their tone of voice, their expression, and even gesture when they're being sarcastic to somebody. Like, oh, yeah, like I wanted to go there yesterday. Right. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, yeah. So I wanted to cuss on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say another word for donkey on Brian's show. Uh, for, for, uh, dry humor, for dry humor to be successful, the person executing the joke shouldn't have any changes in their tone expression or their gesture. After all, the art of dry humor is delivering a humorous line as if it were normal everyday conversation. Okay, so, so insane, like, wow, I've got this joke. It's like, it, well, it would be like Stephen Wright. It would be like Stephen Wright, yeah. and it would also be the entire movie Airplane. Yeah, well, yes. And then you know, like Stephen Wright's like, okay, so I walked up and I said, hey, baby. And then I kicked it. And then everybody starts laughing. And he's like, oh. Or, or he'll say, for my birthday, I got a humidifier or dehumidifier. I put them in the same room and had them uh, do, fight do it, it out. out. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never been a huge fan of Stephen Wright, but I, oh I definitely gosh. appreciate him. And uh, and so he is he is a very he's the very epitome of dry humor and in more yeah. modern comedy. Johnny uh, and I saw him in person and it was so funny. 
He did a yeah, great job. It, it's probably funnier I, in person, actually. Where did the term dry humor originate from? It is believed that the term dry humor originally came from the 1920s and was used interchangeably with the term deadpan. It is a compound word that uses the word dead as an emotionless, lifeless, or something similar to that effect. Sure. And then pan was the contemporary slang for face during this time period. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. I'd never heard that in like in The Great Gatsby. Did anybody say something about, hey, that guy's pan was all messed up or, you know. Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah. I mean, I knew deadpan mate meant face, but I didn't realize pan pan was yeah. slang for face. Okay, cool. Yeah. So what this means is that the term deadpan would refer to someone delivering a joke with a dead face or a face that is emotionless. While it's believed that the term originated during the 1920s, it wasn't until 1934 that the term truly began to have its own definition. From there, uh, it would have a massive impact on the entire world of comedy. I don't know about massive, but that's what this article said. So <laughs> why is it called dry and, and is there a wet humor? In this case, Dry is not the opposite of wet, but it means bare and lacking adornment, such as a dry report. Okay. For example. So, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, so there you go. It makes sense. And you're right. The movie Airplane, Naked Gun, some of those, which interestingly enough, we don't have a lot of those style of movies anymore. No, they were great. No, they were, they were huge before. 70s and 80s. Like 90s, in, in the 90s. Well, 90s. even even in the 90s, they were because they did Hot Shots and some of those in the 90s. Yeah, and true. Robin That's Hood true. Men in Tights, which didn't quite go as well. That's right. Yeah, but, but yeah, then after, there were, there were since a few. then, what has what has there been? I don't know. I can't even think of any actually. I'm sure there's something, but not probably like a that. lot of things. A lot of things in the UK. Uh, the dry humor has a good has a very strong mm. presence in in uh, the UK. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I don't know. So okay. Anyway. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Well, there you go. Uh, I appreciate that. And thanks, Chris, for bringing that up. Because it is a good question. Like, where did the whole dry yeah. come from? But that makes that makes perfect sense. I Well, I mentioned this a long time ago, Star Trek Prodigy. And I said I had checked it out. And then I, whatever. They did 10 episodes. And they're coming back later in two, I think sometime this year or later on, that they're supposed to finish it out. I don't know how many episodes are going to be. But this was clearly a 10 episode run with a clear break in between so that if they come back in the fall or whatever, they're able to finish out season one and then go from there. But I got to tell you what, this is interesting to me because, you know, some of our frustrations that we've had with Discovery, even Picard, I got to be honest that even though this is, I mean, this is a Nickelodeon production, so it is clearly made for a younger audience. Right. I think they did a really, really good job telling some good quality Star Trek. And in, my opinion, definitely better than Discovery. Definitely. Yeah, okay. Is it huh. better than Picard? In At times it is. Um, like I said, it's clearly meant for kids, but for Star Trek fan adults, it's like, it's actually pretty good. So cool. I just wanted to say that the first 10 episodes were, were enjoyable. It got better as the season went on. But if you're looking for some good quality Star Trek story, check that out, especially if you're not a big fan of Discovery. So I'm just throwing out. Cool. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about Moon Knight. We're going to do that that review. I got to be honest, I didn't know much about, I still don't know much about Moon Knight. I knew it was coming. I didn't okay. know any background, but watch the first few episodes and we're going to talk about this this upcoming next next Thursday. <laughs> next Thursday. Oh, now you're Catalan? Is that what you are, you're you trying to do now? Are you trying to talk like a Catalan Spaniard or something? I was, I was going to try to go for uh, Elmer Fudd, but I got stuck. Are we gonna so go to, we're gonna, can we go to Ibiza? Can we go to Ibiza this weekend? <laughs> It was more of like a a tongue tying. You get your tongue stuck. The kith. uh, What is that? Like a Christmas is best to celebrate it with kith and kin. (laughs) (laughs) Go watch Christmas vacation if you haven't seen it. And then upload season two. I finally have been watching. Did you did you see it or was it? I know up too late watched it up too late watches upload. I like that. That's good. You know, yeah, I haven't even, I don't even remember you mentioning upload season one. I have not seen either. Man, yeah, we talked about that. It's been a while. 2020 upload season one came out. It was good. I really liked it. In fact, it it was one of those shows, you know, it's like 30 minute episodes. So I thought I'm gonna go back and rewatch season one just so I could kind of refresh everything. Mm -hmm. I loved it the second time. And I don't usually do that when it comes to TV shows. Season two is not quite as good as season one by any means. Um, It still has some enjoyable parts and stuff, but it's only seven episodes, which is kind of disappointing. And like I but, said, the, the story in season one was so good. I mean, you're just like, this is incredible. And season two was just kind of, eh, it, but it's still fun. Wait, it's what is fun. the premise behind upload? What, what's going on there again? Remind so the me. idea is that it's set in our future. And basically when you die, you can die or you can upload your consciousness to a virtual reality world. Oh, okay. And then, you know, you're, 
your brain. So basically like, my number one fantasy in, in life. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So you're All still right. alive in a computer game, essentially. But, okay. You know, I like it. Yeah. It's really cool. But what's interesting about it is how corporatized they made this. And it's a no, really no, it fascinating. Well, of course it would be, but it's yeah. fascinating how they've done it. And it's so realistic. But season See, one was fantastic. I know you'd love season one. Season okay. two is still good, but I think they, I think they kind of dropped the ball in the story a little bit which was okay. disappointing, but seven episodes too. They needed to do at least 10. I, I, I don't know. Here's another thing. Yeah. Uh, have you heard of the bubble? No. On Netflix? No, I haven't been, you know, I haven't been browsing Netflix's new stuff for the last couple months, so I'm not sure. I'm a little behind on Netflix, believe it or not. I'm starting to question our subscription to Netflix right now because they just raised their prices yet again, and they've they've jacked their prices up quite a bit over the last year. Yeah, and they keep using the excuse of, "Well, we we're going to raise our prices so we can bring you new and better content," and then they don't marketers. And then what they do is they end up bringing you kind of like, really, this movie, this this came out thirty years ago. You know, like give me some news. Nope. And then what they're doing is they're making their own Netflix shows and movies, which some are good. Austin Space, that's awesome. Very awesome. So, of course, Netflix created this new movie called The Bubble, which had some big actors in it. I mean, Mandalorian's in it. And I mean, there, there's a lot. Well, Let's put it that way. There's there's well, he's not like a huge actor, but uh, big enough actors that you're kind of like, OK, and I got to be honest, dude, I was watching this and I was like, this is bad. I, I can't even finish it. <laughs> How many I mean, episodes did you get in? No, no, it was a movie. So, oh, OK, I'm I sorry. got about three quarters of the way through the movie serious. and was like. I, I can't finish it. I, I wish I oh, could, wow. but I was like, this is really bad. And then I went and looked at the rating on, on IMDb and it was like a four point something. Out of Holy <laughs> cow. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, if you're going to keep raising your prices, Netflix and at least put out something good. I mean, come on, this is kind of dumb. They keep but putting out junk. One person's crap crap is another person's awesome film, yeah, Brian. I mean, there's a difference between. Say. So, I mean, there's a lot of movies that I enjoy watching. It's like the cheesy guilty pleasure kind of that, you know, that's the definition people use. There right. was, there was a movie called clock stoppers that Jonathan Frakes put together and it was oh. really bad, but it was so much fun. And oh. then like zoom, which was a, a Tim Allen superhero movie, which was also really bad, but it was a lot of fun. There's a difference between that has charm and that's fun and it's not a good movie, but at least it's a fun movie with some charm. This movie just had nothing. It was oh, one of those like, this is bizarre. Uh, what, was the, right. what was the premise behind the bubble? It was to take place in 2020 and, you know, so the pandemic had just hit. They were filming like, I think, number five or six or something in this chain of movies. I think it was kind of a, a like a hack on the Sharknado movies a little bit too. And so it's this group of actors that comes in to the film studio, the pandemic hits and they're the only two film studios left open. They're one of two and they're trying to film this movie throughout the pandemic. And of course now they, in the beginning of the movie, it was pretty funny when they were making fun of the stuff with COVID. It's kind of like you walk in and everyone's wearing face shields and masks, you know, and, and then it's like, if somebody got COVID, they had to shut everything down, you know? And it was this <laughs> really funny, like they, they did a good job kind of mocking it. And then it just didn't go anywhere after that. I, and not even really, then it started to have like this very bizarre angst and drama. And, uh, I just could, at that point I was like, this isn't funny anymore. I don't know what's going on, but Hey, one thing we can always count on Hollywood to do is, is make good and bad movies Yeah, in not so equal measure. So I feel like it's this okay. would be one of those B rate schlock horror films, but not really okay. heart horror, you know, but the, the kind of thing that mystery science theater could really take on. Ooh, you know what I wish Something MST3K like would do? I, you know, they keep putting stuff out and it's always, and it's been good for decades and decades, Mystery Science Theater 3000. But what I really wish they would do is do a series on some blockbuster movies. Like, like have those guys oh, watch kind of fun. like The Matrix or have them watch Lord of the Rings or have them watch, oh, uh, yeah. you know, name your huge, very popular that would be awesome. stands the test of time movies mm -hmm. just for fun. I mean, why not? So I, I mean, maybe like it costs the, too much. I don't know. Lord. Well, Lord of the Rings would be, you're right. I bet that's the issue is getting the rights to it, yeah, but maybe. they could do something like Lord of the Rings would be amazing. This movie would be prime, man. It's just, you know what? And maybe somebody liked it. Not trying to rain on anyone's parade. I just was, I was wow. But right. my, my point is, is that if I can't finish it and I can't even like, I think it was bad. Then 
some of you who have similar taste to me can avoid this is more what I, you know, I took the hit for the team is what I'm trying to say. Exactly. We've all yeah. been there. Too, yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. All right. We've all had thing, that movie. I was going to recommend, uh, not recommend, not, uh, but I have it on my list finally. And that is death on the Nile and the King's man, which I know some of you probably already seen is a long time ago, but uh King's man came out in the theaters a while ago. I have it finally. And then um, death on the Nile just came out recently into um, digital. So, Cool. I'm excited to see it. Now you finally got a chance to watch Spider-Man No Way Home, the latest yeah, Spider-Man. Speaking and, of, uh, what speaking did you think of, of blockbuster it? movies? So yeah. yeah, so going into that, everyone I had talked to, everyone was like, "Oh, it's easily the best Spider-Man, best Spider-Man, best Spider-Man." Expectations. Et Oops. Yeah. Well, I mean, but, well, so uh, I, I also had high expectations going into Bat- the Batman, and mm-hmm. my, those expectations were more or less met. Uh, I I agreed that it was a really good movie. I enjoyed Spider-Man No Way Home, but it was, to me, in no way as good as some of the previous uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Interesting. Uh, I I just, I thought it had a little bit, it was just a little bit too much. It was a little too shallow, I think. A little mm. too surface. Uh, there wasn't, I, I just, for some reason, I didn't like the, you know, just the writing. The plot was kind of like, oh, Okay. Uh, believe it or not, Zendaya, I thought she was the least annoying in this movie. Uh, I, I actually didn't mind her at all. Yeah. In fact, I started liking her more in this movie. I was like, oh, I could, I could, okay. I could put up with Zendaya. Yeah. Uh, so, so that was a positive. Yeah. Uh, but, but for the most part, the movie just didn't hit it as I, I wouldn't, I would not rate it as highly as all of my friends did. The thing is, is that they've all been good. And maybe yeah. it's because I've seen them multiple times that this one felt like the best because it was new. I don't know. Um, I don't know, but the you whole, know, I, I've enjoyed all of them. And the, the, the one thing that I think would maybe, maybe this is part of it. They did the, the nostalgic aspect was really cool. Combining, you know, the universes and stuff was really cool. Spider-Man universes. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they just like they did with ghostbusters and the matrix and stuff. I wonder if they just leaned a little too hard on that and sacrificed story for nostalgia, which I think is becoming a, a big problem right now with, they did it with Boba Fett too. It'll, it'll, it's a phase. I I'm confident. Uh, but I think you hit the nail on the head and just, just the whole, the, st- I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like what you just said. They, they, they wanted to present this nostalgic, uh, run through, uh, you know, with the old Spider-Mans, mm-hmm. the previous two Spider-Mans before Tom Holland. And then, and throw them all together in this situation. But the situation they threw them together in with, you know, Dr. Strange is one of my favorite characters yeah. of all the MCU. Uh, but, the, but the whole thing with him doing that spell to help Spider-Man to be Peter Parker out, yeah. it just seemed really just almost lowbrow. Uh, it just felt like more of a kid's movie. Almost well, the plot. did. I was going to ask if you felt like Dr. Strange was a little out of character in this movie. Only if, if he was, it was only because of the writing and, and how they, how that's they what I meant. What I'm not talking did. about him as an actor. I'm talking about his character from a writing standpoint. Did he feel like he was uh, out of character a little bit? A little bit, because I don't think that the, I don't think that the Dr. Strange that we have, we have come to know in the previous MCU movies would have been that frivolous with his power. I would like, agree. Well, with I'll that. just that help was... you out with this. I'll just help you out with this spell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that was one no, thing. He would have done that. It was one thing where I was kind of like, wait, what? And then I kind of overlooked it and then just enjoyed the movie. But then I got to thinking later, actually, wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty glaring thing for me right early on. And of course, when you have a, when you have a plot hole that glaring for me, at least it, it, it does taint the rest of the movie, no matter how fun it is. Uh, I, yeah. I can't help it. I so, hope that they address that in the new Dr. Strange. I hope they actually kind of, yeah, cause I'm looking forward to that. Yeah like come together and kind of say, wait a minute, you know, why did you do this and why are you acting this way? And now there's consequences. And I mean, I don't know. I hope that's what's going to happen. And I kind of, I wonder if it was setting it up because there's the whole multiverse aspect to the new Dr. Strange movie that I, I don't know. You know, what's speaking of new movies coming out, because I know that's going to be one, I guess the, the new, Fantastic Beasts is out. Secrets of Dumbledore. Yeah. Is it out already? I know it's coming out. Yeah. It imminently. Okay. Or maybe it, Wait, did it come out on Friday? I thought it either came out last week or it's coming. I can't remember. Um, you know, I'm not as up to date on theater movies as I used to be just because right. I haven't we gone don't go as to the frequently. Yeah. yeah. I've not seen good ratings so far. Disappointing, like down low sixes out of 10. And, and hopefully that'll change a little bit, but I, that surprised me a little bit. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah. I hope it's okay. okay. You know, they just have not captured the magic of Harry Potter with the 
Dumbled with with a Grindle. I can't even say it. Grindelwald, Dumbledore, everybody. The Fantastic Beast movies. I've enjoyed them quite a bit. The first one, they captured the magic, you know, climbing down into his suitcase, and it's this huge. That was amazing. Like the magic of that was incredible. The beasts were incredible. But um, yeah, they just haven't captured like they did with uh, Harry Potter movies as much, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's. It might like just be as simple on. as it might just be as simple as the novelty is is played out. Yeah. Uh, or people are just more critical these days. Maybe because uh, yeah. there's so much to. I mean, when, when you have when you have such a such a flood of things to watch, yeah, your your data points in your head get get more. You know, you have more data points in your head, and so I think being more critical comes naturally. Yeah, uh, in some in, in some t- with some perspective, right? So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I wonder. I don't know. That's interesting. It's a phenomenon right now. Okay, well, I've got some new music. You ready for this one, dude? Dude, oh, yeah. hit me. Muse has new music. Muse. <laughs> I like their new stuff a lot, and I'm just like, Good. this is fun, man. So, but it's interesting. It's definitely a commentary on culture right now because the title of the song is Compliance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's um wow. Um lyrically it's one of those, huh, should I be listening to this? But at the same really? time, it's just one of those, like, I, I don't like being subliminally. I mean, everybody does it, but whatever. It's great music though, but it's a great song. So I just figured I'd mention it, but muse compliance. Now I mentioned this dude a, a few weeks ago. His name was Avi, Avi, Avi Kaplan is his name. And I mentioned him a few weeks ago. He did a song with joy Williams. That was uh, oh my gosh. It's so good. It's on the list right now. But I decided to check out some of his stuff. And it's so funny because like not only does his picture look like this, but his music reminds me of 70s folk. And it's kind of that, you know, America meets um, kind of Alabama, but more America and kind of that stuff. It's really interesting. But I put down two songs that I'm going to put in the list. Song for the Thankful and I Can't Lie. They're, They're both really interesting. It's just thought, hey, it's a little different. And I thought, why not? add a little bit of a a flavor. And here's another one here that I I think everyone's going to get a kick out of because you know, I'm not a country fan at all, which Avi Kaplan has some country, but again, it's more seventies folk and that's more why I like it. Now this one is like full on country yodeling. (laughs) (laughs) Country yodeling. It's so funny, but this is not a new song. This is a really old song. I was watching again, by the way, um, Secondhand Lions. Have you ever seen that movie? No. Oh not. my gosh. If if you've never seen Secondhand Lions, do yourself a favor and watch that movie. It is beautiful. It is a what, young what year to come um, out, 2004, I want to say. Okay, so recent-ish. Okay. Yeah, so Michael Caine is in it and uh, Robert Duvall is in it and uh, what's his name? Joel, uh, Haley, Joel Osment. Is that his name? You know, the I see oh, dead people. I see dead people. Yeah. yeah. When he was still, when he was he was still, still pretty young. Then. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, this is one of those movies when it came out, I, we watched it a lot and I just thought, man, I want to watch this. It's been a long time, you know? So it's a really, really, really good movie. Great, great story. Beautiful. Well, there's a song in there when they're screwing around and doing stuff, you know, and it's this yodeling song. And I was like, I forgot about this song. It's so ridiculous. So I went and found it. It's by Don Walzer. Huh. And it's called Rolling Stone from Texas. And if you've never heard the song, I mean, like I said, it's not new. I'm putting it on there because it is like yeah, the, go it is it. some intense yodeling and he had some freaking high notes that you're like, ow. Oh man, good stuff. So go check it out. The TRBS 2022 mix is on Spotify. That's what I use. But if you don't use it, go grab the songs and go from there. But subscribe to the list too so you can have it. And again, that's all going to be in the description and the show notes stuff. <laughs> <What>? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't hear what you're hearing. <laughs> it's in my head, man. Oh, okay. uh, it's kind of like the voices in my head. Deep thoughts with Captain Influence. When your favorite skillet starts to burn food in the center, no matter how much oil you use, that's what I call a dead pan. Yeah, you know what the music means. <laughs> Shut up. No. Wait. Stop. Huh? Sorry, the voices. I hear the yodeling and I hear the voices and. And the music? I hear the music. Wait, do you hear the music? No. Am I the only one that hears the music? Maybe. Okay, hey, have a great week. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. The Real Brian Show is signing off, I think. The Real Brian Show is a production of 514 Media at 514mediaempire.com.